Good day everyone, and welcome to another What's This Then? Today we're going to be asking that about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. So this game is a 3D fighting game, and you may be familiar with the Budokai Tenkaichi series. Now this is kind of a reboot of the series, and it's actually gone with the Sparking name, because apparently that is the... Uh, I'm not sure if that's a translation or direct use of the original Japanese name. And uh, zero to mean that pretty much anyone can get into this. You don't need to have played the others. Um, it is developed by Spike Chunsoft Chun and developed by Bandai Namco. Now, the developers, some of their previous work was on the Danganronpa series. So quite a bit different from uh, maybe some other stuff they've done. Um, this one comes to PC, PS5, and both of the Xbox Series consoles came out about three days ago there, on the 10th of October. On sale for about £55 or $70 respectively. And there was also a three days paid early access period, which I'm starting to notice is becoming a bit of a trend amongst games these days, and I'm not a big fan. Just something really rubs me the wrong way about, hey, this game is done. We will now artificially push it back three days so that we can get more money out of people, you know? So, kind of got off on the wrong foot with me on that one. Just not a big fan of that uh, that idea. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's actually jump into the options menu here so you can have a wee look around here. Now, this is definitely a controller game. Definitely a controller game. I have not tried it with mouse and keyboard. I imagine you could but it, it just strikes me as a very much designed to run controller game. Um, but if we have a look in controls and camera, we've got your usual assortment of sort of things you'd expect from a 3D game here. Um, there is different control styles. Um, now one is the classic that they used back in the older games. However, I have been told, because I've never played the original games. Um, I was just not, not a Dragon Ball guy back when those were a thing. Um, but I have been told that the standard layout is probably the better one to go for and that the classic one primarily exists for fans of the older games so they have they can just jump right in you can also change what uh display type for all the buttons and stuff in your input which i'm a big fan of because the ps5 controller is so good and i'm glad it's becoming more and more uh supported and then you have your usual stuff like camera sensitivities and you can rebind uh, mouse inputs here. Now, I don't believe you can rebind controller inputs, so it is just mouse and keyboard. Uh, unfortunately, it would be nice to rebind some controller stuff as well. Uh, but if we hop on over to sound, usual stuff here. Um, one thing of note is this does use music from the anime and you can turn that off if you wish in the backgrounds of like the fights and stuff. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I just have that turned off just so YouTube doesn't decide that um, actually 90% of the countries on planet Earth cannot see this video now. So that's why that's off for now. Uh, display, language stuff, yep, yeah, usual stuff, subtitles, all that good business. Uh, this game has HDR support, which you can toggle on and off here and also do your brightness for your SDR. Um, I have not tried the HDR to see if it's any good, but I haven't heard any bad things about it yet. So hopefully that's all good as well. And if we look at the graphics options here, um, one interesting thing that this game keeps doing to me is that whenever I have this game in Borderless, I have three monitors uh, currently in use. It does not detect three. For some reason, it thinks my main monitor is monitor number two, even though everything else, such as Windows Display, recognizes this as monitor number one. And the game will oftentimes open on the wrong monitor, which is very irritating. And I'll sometimes have to come back into the settings here to get it back onto this, or I will have to do the window shortcut to move the window over. Which is, yeah, like I said, just a little bit annoying. It's a little bit annoying when, that has, when I have to keep doing that. I don't know why that's a thing. I've, I've had this happen with, like, a few games in the past, and it's just confusing. I don't understand how you can, like, mess something like that up when it seems to have been a non-issue for a long time. Or it just seems like the odd game, just like one out of a hundred, you know, just decides, you know what? This setting just doesn't work sometimes. Other than that, we hop into the actual main bulk of the settings here, and you've got a lot of stuff here. Uh, your usual bits and pieces. Quite a bit more than I was expecting, considering the game is uh, very stylized. Usually these very stylized games don't let you mess with the effects too much. 
or, or the graphic settings too much. Um, but it's good to see this good stuff in here. I have camera shake, you can turn that off, motion blur, I actually have that on for some reason. I actually don't, I haven't noticed it too much since I've been playing, to be honest, so let's not be too bad. Usually I'm a, I'm a motion blur off kind of guy. But yeah, not, not like hugely in depth, but more than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, accessibility, there is a ton of accessibility stuff in here. Um, you can just get loads of help with all the different systems in the game, like if you just need help with uh, blocking or doing combos, all that sort of stuff. And the way this game, the way this game actually plays is very different from uh, any other sort of fighting game that I've played, so you c it's hard to come over to this one with any sort of real muscle memory um, from other games, so this could be, this could be uh, quite nice for a lot of people. And in the end we just have like the terms and conditions, nothing really too important there. So if we actually hop into the actual main menu, because this is like the fake main menu, You'll we'll see here we are, here's a bunch of the cast of the characters. So this is your, so as you can see at the bottom left, this is like the episode and custom. This is where you would do the main sort of bulk of what this game has to offer. Uh, go through the story of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super, um, with a bunch of different characters and their key moments throughout it. Now, because it's so split up into what characters you pick for their, like, so you'll play as Goku and you'll do some Saiyan Saga stuff and then you'll just jump straight into the next moment that he's relevant in the Namek Saga. So if you're just doing Goku, you will skip huge parts of the story. So for anyone who's actually, like, wanting to play this game to learn about Dragon Ball, like the story of Z and going into Super and stuff, it's not that good because you won't know what characters you'll have to switch to to get the relevant story beats. Because you can do that as you're going through. You can be like, okay, so Vegeta would technically be the next sort of main character here, so we can swap over to Vegeta. You wouldn't know that. So that, that's one thing I've kind of noticed with this game. This is for Dragon Ball fans. This is not get people into Dragon Ball. This is for the existing Dragon Ball fans. And that's not a bad thing, just to make you aware that that is what this game's target audience is. But from here, yeah, like I said, you can do episode battle, and we'll go into that in a minute here, but I want to get through the rest of the main menu stuff. Custom battle also just lets you set up, like, 1v1 against the AI or something like that. Or actually, no, this is the... No, sorry, this isn't that part. Uh, this is actually, like, a really funky bit where you can download, like, other people's custom battles that they've made, and then there's also bonus battles in here that are just very, like, weird and wacky scenarios in the Dragon Ball universe, like... The episode battles have a couple of like what ifs in them, like what if this character beat this guy this time, or and it can split off into alternate timeline events, which is very cool if you're a Dragon Ball fan, there's a lot of really cool stuff there. But the custom battles are just very like, okay, these two characters could not have been in the same place at the same time, but what if it happened anyway? You know, so you got tons of stuff like that. So if we switch on over to battle training, and you see we do a little animation to get over here. This is where you would do, um, if you wanted to set up like an offline battle against like a AI to sort of practice or just mess about, um, where you could also go into the online mode and you'll see you have player and ranked matches and everything. And the way the ranked matches work is very cool because obviously you've got some characters, Dragon Ball has been going for a long time and the power scaling in this, uh, in this universe is insane. So you have characters that get hurt by bullets, and then you also have characters that shake universes just by punching someone. So, how does it balance that? It has what's called the DP system. And that is, each character has a number associated with their relative, like, power. And you can only have 15 DP going into a fight. So if you pick one of the really strong characters, then you've just used up most of your stuff. And then if you choose, like, a bunch of weaker characters, you've got more to work with. You've got more variety, you've got more uh, abilities. Um, th those characters may have less health and maybe do a little bit less damage compared to those stronger characters, but, you know, now there's... You only have to beat that, like, one strong guy, you know? So that can that's kind of like the balance of this game. It's not perfect. It's not really meant to be perfect. This is a very, very casual game. But I do like the attempt to make... A sort of ranked match work and I think they do a good enough job at it to be honest without having to nerf too many things under the ground and you can also this is where you can do your super training which is where you will learn all the different systems of the game and I would highly recommend doing this right away if you're new to this because there is a ton 
of little mechanics in this game. Because I hadn't played the originals, I didn't really know what I was getting myself in for when I got this, but it's way more in-depth than I thought. Like, parries, uh, specific types of combos based on, like, really context-sensitive situations. You've got, like, the ability to instant transmission about the place. Like, that's a specific move, which has its own specific parry. Then you've got, like, a charging system and then a sparking system, which is, you know, the name of the game. And those give you access to new abilities. And you have, like, character transformations. And you've got, like, specific blocks, like high, medium, and low blocks. Like, there's all sorts of stuff. Tons of stuff. I will say, though, the battle training... It does let you know that these features exist, and it does give you button prompts to say, hey, here's how you do it, and a setup on how to do it, but it's not very good at explaining the moves themselves, or giving you further context into how these moves might be used in an actual fight. So, for me, it was the sort of training I did, and then once I got into a fight, it was hard to retain... A bunch of it it's that you may want to you may want to go through you may want to go through the training because it's set up into different sort of like levels of training you know, like intermediate novice that sort of stuff you may want to do hey let's do the novice training okay let's go into a fight learn that learn what we need to do okay cool got that done jump into intermediate you may want to do it that way i went through every single thing because i just like to know all the systems i'm getting used to and then i forgot like 90 percent of them now that part isn't obviously that's not a knock on the game that's more so me um but it is something you can very easily do if you're not uh, if you're not paying too much attention. And like I said as well, like there's a bunch of the training it will just tell you about and like it will tell you the bare bones. Just here's what it is and that's how it works. All right, get going. And that's up to you to sort of learn the context of sort of how it would work in an actual fight. So that's how the training sort of works in this game. Um, you can also set up like a little world tournament because this being Dragon Ball, you have to have a world tournament. And there's a bunch of different types as well, which is really cool. So you can set up, like, uh, sort of different presets, or you can set up your own one. You can even have it so, like, going out of bounds uh, makes you lose and stuff like that. So this is all really cool stuff if you're if you're into the Dragon Ball IP. Which, again, is another theme of this game. Like, if you're into the Dragon Ball IP, there's just a ton of stuff to like. Um, so if we have a look at the challenges and missions screen here, we've got... Uh, basically, these are just play the game, do stuff in the game, you will get rewards. So, if we look in here... For example, you've got just like... Win 200 times and you'll get 20,000 zenny and stuff like that, or like different banners for your player card and... All sorts of different things, you know, just play game, get stuff. Which is always nice. Uh, Wish's stamp book is very much the same. I don't really understand the real difference in the two of these. They're very, very similar systems. Just do stuff, get reward. As you can see, like... I think these ones are maybe a bit more, like, themed. But they tend to get you mostly the same stuff, so... But you'll always you'll always be getting something by playing this game. And whenever you get the those somethings... Uh, this is sort of where you would go next. So player card is pretty basic stuff. You just uh, just customize like titles and you know your stats and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I haven't personally touched it yet, just because I haven't really touched the multiplayer or anything like that yet. But that's uh, where other people would see your stuff that you're showing off. Um, you have the shop slash customize here. Now there's a lot of stuff in this game that is hidden uh, or locked behind like uh, uh, Zenny, the currency is called. There's like ability items, and I believe you can use these to help yourself in single player or in casual multiplayer matches. I personally haven't really used any of these or felt like I've had to use any, so um, I'm not 100% sure on these, but you can see that some of them like increase how much health you have and stuff like that. Um, some characters are locked behind uh, Zenny here, so you'll have to you'll have to actually buy them from this little store. And then there's other characters that are locked behind just playing through the, the episodes. And one thing I'm very happy to say is that this game does not lock anything behind microtransactions. Like you may, in in current gaming, it would be very easy to see this little store looking screen here and think, oh Jesus, you know, am I going to have to pay like £10, $10 or whatever for each character here or some shit. But uh, nope, uh, you can get all this and you can get it all very quickly. I haven't, I've maybe played this game for about five or six hours now and... Like, I've had enough to get, like, Ultra Instinct, uh, Goku, and 
I think he had Ruby. I don't think I bought him. I think I actually just got him from playing the game. And you can see, like, in the bottom right there, I have a lot of Zenny as well. So I could I could purchase a bunch of these characters right now if I wanted to. So it's very, very generous. And then you also have outfits for, uh, for a bunch of the characters. Not every character now. Mainly your Gokus and your Vegetas and stuff, because they're the two with the most. And you can get, like, voices for emotes. You can get background music. You can get strategy items, which is just when you fight against a character that the CPU is controlling, you can have them do a very specific type of uh, personality. So like, they're very melee based, they're very key, key blast based, you know, that kind of stuff. And then you have like player cards and stuff. Typical, typical business. But yeah, it's a good, it's a good little shop, good little shop. And uh, just glad to see something like that in a game that isn't uh, microtrans a front for microtransactions. And then if we hop on over to the gallery, um, this is where you, theaters where you can see your replays. My data is just, yeah, your stats and all that sort of business. And encyclopedia is a pretty cool thing. Um, if you're if you're a big fan of the Dragon Ball universe, you're gonna enjoy this, I think, which is where you can come in here and you have Chi Chi, Bulma and Videl who will just chat absolute shit about every character in the game. Um, They'll, they'll, they'll mostly give you like a little bit of background and like a little bit of like, you know, their relation to that character or something like that. Like if you talk about Goku, then Chi Chi's like, oh, that's the guy, that's the man I married. If you do the first version of him here. But if you like do like one of the later transformations and they'll be like, oh, I hate his hair. <laughs> they'll just chat shit about him. I love it. It's quite funny. Just a, just another like layer of character that this game has because it, it does have a ton of character. And then come forth. This is the one part of the game that I haven't like touched at all yet, just because you need to keep playing to get Dragon Balls, and then you get the Dragon Balls, summon the specific type of dragon you want to summon. So you can do Shenron, Paranga, and Super Shenron. Um they let you do different sort of levels of things. Like I know Super Shenron, I've seen it that uh, you can actually wish to unlock one of the characters that are locked. Um it won't it won't let you get a specific one, but it'll give you a random choice of like some of them, and then you can be like, oh I got that one for free, sort of thing. So that's pretty cool. So let's actually hop into... We'll hop into the next episode battle I've got here with Goku. So I've done the Saiyan Saga fights with him. Just beat the uh, Great Ape Vegeta, which I've uh, seen a lot of people uh, having a bit of trouble with. And yeah, he likes to, he likes to spam those uh, mouth beams. Fun little animation to sort of get into it here. So you get these kind of like cutscenes, and they're quite they're quite well drawn, very well animated and stuff. Um, a lot of them, because there's so much variation and so much going on in this game, a lot of the cutscenes will be these like still images, and it'll sort of fly through them, you know, with like a bit of text and stuff, just to kind of set you up. This is what I mean when I say that like. If you were wanting to experience the Dragon Ball story through this game, that may not be the best way to go about it. But I'm just going to fly through this real quick. And I suppose that's uh, that's another thing. Like, if you're worried about spoilers, it's one of those things that if you've, if you've played Dragon Ball, you're not worried about spoilers. And if you haven't played Dragon Ball, this game is not the game to be learning the story. What is wrong with Raccoon's neck there? <laughs> Their proportions are crazy sometimes. Sorry, yeah, as you can see, the game looks absolutely fantastic. Like the the animations and stuff, and the art style, and everything looks really faithful to uh, to the anime. Some stuff I would say even looks better than what the anime did, because you might have had like a more rushed episode or something. Whereas this is like a really consistent style. Oh, so this is the Jason Birder fight. Okay, so this is what it means. Like I went straight from fighting Vegeta on Earth to this fight with minimal context in between. So, I don't know if this fight's gonna be hard, I haven't actually tried it yet, but I'll sort of show you a bit of what the game plays like. So you have your usual punches, you've got your key blasts and stuff, and you can charge up by holding like R2. And pretty much anything you can do, they can do as well, except they have their own flavors of it. A lot of really cool stuff. As you can see, like the animations are just absolutely fantastic. So charge up some key here. Give me your energy. See what that is. Because this, this is a sort of technically a new version of Goku that I'm playing that has like new uh, 
abilities and stuff. See if I can dodge that. Nope. So if you're if you're a veteran of the of the older games, you're probably thinking like, "What is this guy doing?" But there's there's so much to learn, so many little techniques and so many little things. Like I said, it's just so much more in depth than I thought it was, and you can really enjoy it at any level because the spectacle of the game is just really good. Like this really is as close as I think it's possible to get to actually playing or as getting as close as possible to playing a Dragon Ball fight, you know? Like, I, I don't think you could really do much better. You get these little mini-games sometimes, like, uh, if two people do the same sort of type of move at each other at the same time, like, so you can get, like, a beam clash and uh, stuff like that, and then you'll have to, like, do some timings and stuff. I hit him with this right in his face. Oh, he's dodged it. That's what I mean by, like, the, the tutorials can teach you about how stuff works, but, like, you'll still run into scenarios where, like, you're like, I'm just thinking there, like, how did he dodge that? You know, was I too close? Uh, did he dodge just in time? Was that a timing thing? Um, that's the sort of thing where, like, just playing the game, you're going to learn pick pick that sort of thing up, so... Because the, the game can be, uh can be quite hard. Especially, like I said, if this is going to be your first uh, one of these that you've played. Okay, so now we're just going to hit Jesus with the Spirit Bomb. <laughs> Which is just one of the absolutely ridiculous scenarios that this game lets you uh, sort of live out. And he's dodged it. Of course he has. Well, this is just brilliant. He's actually just flying away from me. Get back here. But it also reminds me that if you if you go into the multiplayer, they've uh, the way I was saying about they have that DP system so that you can't just bring all the strong guys. They've also made an effort so that if you want to bring combinations of characters that made sense in the anime, you can do that. So you can bring all five of the Ginyu Force, for example. You can bring all the androids, stuff like that. And uh, I know the Ginyu Force actually has a like a unique intro animation if you bring all of them, which is really cool. See if I can block him and beat him up here, because I know he's low, but I'm also low. Nice. That was definitely a lot closer than I probably would have liked it to be. Music-wise, I can't really comment too much on it, just because it's it's gonna be it's gonna be stuff from the show and you know stuff like that. So if you like if you've watched the show and you like the music, then it's good stuff because the music is good. Um, it's also got plenty of like maps and stuff. Like as you go through the story, you'll see all these different places, and you can choose all of these in the custom battles. Uh, tons of variety between all the different locations. Big fan of that. And you've got like a lot of them being like, you know, destructible, like little plateaus and mountains and stuff like that. So they're a lot of fun to actually fight in. They feel very dynamic and you never really feel like you're running up against a wall or anything like that. So we can see here, like from the anime, like this is the part where Goku obviously beats Jace and then I don't know, is it going to be Bert? Yep, so he's got Captain Ginyu here, so we're actually going to fight them now. The AI can be really aggressive sometimes as well. Like, the AI will just, uh... Well, sometimes just, just decide, like, I'm going to kill you now. Which is really good, you know? You don't want to... You don't want to just fly your way through these. Um, however, th those, uh, bonus... Sort of fights I was saying about earlier. Those are, like, if you want your real challenge. Um, those are setting up scenarios that are, like... Designed to be ridiculously hard. Like, up really uphill battles type thing. Like, you're going to have to have mastered, like, a lot of what the game has to offer to beat those, I think. And then you've also got the multiplayer to go for, like, rankings and stuff, so. Let's see if we can hit you with the Spirit Bomb. I think I might be a bit too close for this. But again, we get to see an absolutely gorgeous animation for it. 
I will say, I do feel for the animators, and I've missed again. I do feel for the animators who had to animate a different looking Kamehameha for like 50 different characters. But they've done a, they've done an absolutely fantastic job. This this game, like I said, is gorgeous. I don't think I can really talk about that enough. Because you want to feel like you're looking at a Dragon Ball game and you want to feel like you're playing a Dragon Ball game and this, this does uh, both of those things very well. Nice. <laughs> Your strength is unbelievable. Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah that's kind of that's kind of how I'm feeling on the game at the minute. It's um very very good for existing Dragon Ball fans. If you like Dragon Ball, you will love this game because it's gonna provide you so much stuff that you've been watching over the years, and let you interact with it in super cool ways that no other game can really do like you've got the you've got fighters uh dragon ball fighters for example which is absolutely gorgeous and really shows off just how over the top dragon ball can be with a lot of the moves but obviously it's a 2d fighter so there's only so much you can do there when it comes to actually emulating the feeling of dragon ball um but this is this is probably as close as it's ever going to get really to be honest um because and they're just going to keep adding more stuff this game does have um this game does have some DLC plans, um, I believe the season pass was about £30 or so. I didn't see what it is in dollars, but... Um, so they are they already are saying, you know, here's all these new characters coming. A uh, bunch of them from the new Dragon Ball superhero movie. Well, I say new, it was like a year or two ago, maybe. And there's also characters coming from Dragon Ball Daima, I believe it is. The new series that's just sort of aired there. Um, so you've got plenty of stuff to look forward to, plenty of stuff to actually play for, to unlock, to get better at. There's loads of stuff, loads and loads of stuff. It is a very solid package, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, having a great time with it so far. Um, very very casual, very easy to just sit down and be like, you know what? I'm going to throw out some uh, energy beams today. But yeah, I think that's all I really want to talk about with this one. So yeah, in conclusion, very good game. Very, very good game. Um, now, its price is going to depend on whether you think you're going to be this much into Dragon Ball. If you love Dragon Ball, then I'd say pick it up. Absolutely. If you have never watched Dragon Ball and you're thinking about getting into it, then maybe wait for a sale. Because, like I said, this is very much for the fans of Dragon Ball. Not so much a starting point for people wanting to get into it. Unless they don't mind literally being chucked into the middle of everything Dragon Ball has to offer and kind of trying to piece it all together. But yeah, we definitely recommend it. So that's all. Thanks for watching. And if you have any comments about how I can improve the series or just any criticisms or anything you want to say, just leave them in the comments or wherever. And I do like reading them because I'm always liking to improve. So thanks for watching. I shall see you in the next one.